Hi guys, welcome back to another Project Box video. Today we'll be doing a video on my uh, Shelly One. This is the normal standard, uh, box standard Shelly One. This is the one that requires the neutral wire. It's not the Shelly One L that uh, can do without a neutral. But um, I thought it'd be fun to try and use the Shelly One just like you would with the Shelly One L without a neutral. Now the Shelly 1L requires something called a bypass or a load bypass um, and it's a special version of this one that can then work without a neutral. So um, maybe it's possible with a clever little circuit hack to do the same with this. We can make our own bypass of sorts at the light bulb and we can make the box standard Shelly 1 work without this neutral wire here. And um, it's just an experimental circuit, you guys are welcome to try it, but it works perfectly well. And um, the advantages would be that this is slightly cheaper and slightly smaller than the Shelly 1L. And uh, you don't have to buy the bypass either, because you'll be making your own, which will be slightly cheaper as well, because it's only going to be a couple of diodes and a capacitor, so that'll be really cheap. Um, and it'll be fun to try. Um, this uh, might also help because it might fit behind your um, uh, light switch a bit easier because it's smaller. So uh, join me and um, let's have fun doing this. So in order to make this DIY bypass circuit, all we basically need is um, four uh, ordinary rectifier diodes. And then to do it properly, to stop any flickering in the bulb, we also need a capacitor. So that's all we need. No soldering, just the diodes and uh, a couple of these terminal blocks. That's the basic version. I mean, I'll show you at the end of the video how to do a slightly better version. But uh, just to prove the concept, we could make it just with this no soldering line. So to do our no solder version, what you need to do is take two of these um, 1N4007 diodes and you put them sort of uh, one facing up and one facing down. So the stripe indicates the direction of the diode. And you sort of put them at an angle together like that. And then you just start twisting them together. There we go. Put that to the side. And then we do the same thing again. One facing up and one facing down. And we twist them together. And then we take our capacitor, and this is to remove the uh, flicker out of the, the light bulb. And this is the bit where polarity is extremely important. So what we want to do is we want to have uh, the one diode pointing towards the positive terminal of your capacitor and the one that points away goes to the negative and the, the negative is clearly indicated on our capacitor by the little stripe in the, on the silver line here. So what we do is we, we bend the one terminal away of the capacitor, put these two together and we start twisting. And then uh, we do the same on the other side. Start twisting. And then um, what you can do is you can clean it up by trimming off the edges. Trimming the little twisty bits at the top just to make it neat. So here is our bypass unit that goes to the light bulb. What we need to do is simply bend them so that they can these leads can go into the uh, light bulb socket base. So just simply bend them something like that. There we go. And uh, our terminal block 
can simply attach to there. So that's essentially it. That's the bit for the light bulb. That's our bypass circuit for the light bulb. These two diodes with the one pointing towards the neutral and uh, the one coming out from the switch life of your Shelly, they will essentially be going in like that. So that's our complete no neutral uh, bypass circuit for our Shelly one. So let's look at the wiring diagram and see if we can build up a test circuit uh, to see if uh, everything works exactly like the test circuit is supposed to work. So uh, it's time to wire it all up and give it a go. So let's add the lamp bypass circuit, which is the capacitor and the two diodes to the lamp base. And then we'll add a neutral feed into the lamp base itself. So there's no neutral at the Shelly, just at the lamp, the neutral supply. And now let's take our switch, our light switch, and put it into a common Wago terminal to get a live supply. And then the switch live goes into the Shelly itself. And we need a little link to link the relay to the live input. Now it's time to put the diode pointing up and down to the neutral and the relay out of the Shelly one. Now we need to link the live input to the common live of the Wago so all the lives are connected together. And then we need to feed that with a uh, live uh, supply input as well. So that'll be our live supply going into, into the common uh, Wago terminal block. Now it's time to connect the output of the uh, Shelly one via the diodes to the, uh, to the lamp itself via its bypass circuit. And there we go, that's it, that's it, that's it, pretty much connected all together. So let's give it a test with uh, Wi-Fi control. It works fine. Let's try the light switch. That works as well. Hooray! Test circuit works perfectly. Just mind yourself, this is all going to be live, so I have isolated everything before I connected the terminals. Very good. Of course, having um, live, uninsulated bits of metal sticking out from the terminals uh, is not ideal. For example, the capacitor and diode leads sticking out from the light bulb and the Shelly 1. And um, this can be remedied by adding a bit of heat shrink uh, sleeving over it. But I've left this off just for illustrative purposes so you can actually see how this thing works. For a more practical version, of course, everything would have to be properly insulated. So we know the basic circuit works, but I think we can improve on some of the basic functionality. For instance, um, we can improve on safety. And one of the obvious things that uh, you could do is add an inline fuse. Uh, so it has some overcurrent and short circuit protection. But I think there's a slightly better option. We can actually kill two birds with one stone. We can get rid of some of the inrush current um, that uh, puts a lot of stress on the capacitor and the diodes. And we can also have overcurrent protection at the same time. And we can do this by using a neat little trick, by using something called a fusible resistor. And it limits the inrush current, and um, if there's any substantial overcurrent, it uh, burns out just like a fuse and goes open circuit. So uh, it uh, makes the circuit a lot safer, and it adds uh, reliability and longevity to the circuit. Before you want to power your um, experimental mains operated circuit, uh, for, for this kind of circuit, it's quite handy to use an old-fashioned incandescent light bulb and put it in line with your live. And this acts as a safety current limit, in, just in case you make a mistake with uh, the polarity of some of the diodes or capacitor or you have a short of some kind. Uh, these things 
can go pop quite violently and it's very easy to get the polarity wrong on one of them. Only one diode needs to be in the wrong position and uh, the magic smoke will leave your components very quickly. So yes, you just take an old school incandescent light bulb, not an LED bulb, and you take a plug and you put uh, the bulb in line with the live. And then you can test your circuit and if all is well, you can um, take the bulb out of the circuit and you know it works properly. So with the light bulb in line with your circuit, the worst thing that will happen if you make a mistake is the light bulb comes on and nothing goes pop. So it can really save your day using one of these test light bulbs. Of course, uh, I said this video was not about soldering. But if you're anything like me, and you absolutely love soldering, and you want everything to be really neat and tidy, I think a better way to do this is to add um, some of these uh, little flexible wires uh, to the circuit and um, a bit of heat shrink tubing. And then we can make... Um, we can put all these um, things, make them into little modules and um, we can make uh, little modules like this with uh, fly leads on them and then um, all the connections can be made internally, all the junctions and, and the determinations can be made. We have a little wiring loom that goes straight into our Shelly 1 and our light switch can attach here and our switch original switch line um, live in and out connect to here that used to connect to the light switch and we can make a little module like this um, that goes to the light bulb and it should really ease our installation into the back box and it just makes a much neater job. Now that we have little modules with wiring looms attached it makes it dead easy to pre-terminate our Shelly 1 so that when we do our installation into the back box we don't have to mess around with all those little terminal screws and wires. I've got a mock-up of a light switch and uh, a light fixture and uh, there's no neutral at the back box behind the light switch. So this might be a situation where you simply don't have the neutral connection to power your Shelly. So um, what we can do now is we can take the light switch off and uh, terminate that into our little wiring loom and the uh, uh, live connection and the switch live out now go to the uh, little connector block. Now just shove everything as aggressively as possible into the light switch box and put the light switch back. Next we need to fit our little bypass module which is now simple. All we need to do is disconnect the original wires going to the lamp socket base and connect it to the connector block of our bypass module. And then the other end of the bypass module, the wires go straight into the lamp socket base. Great, now let's turn the power back on and give it a test. So we have control with the original light switch. Let's give it a test with Wi-Fi control. That works great. Hooray, we have success. Now, in this point of the video, some of you might be saying, why even bother? I mean, the Shelly 1L already has the no neutral function and you can buy the bypass for it. Well, as I said earlier, it's cheaper and the Shelly 1, it, the normal Shelly 1 is smaller. And also, um, from when I found some pictures online and some people on the forums claiming that um, the bypass of the Shelly 1 sometimes just um, pops and burns out. Um, and I don't know how true this is or how often it happens, but it is concerning. So um, my solution might be better. I, I don't know. Only time will tell if enough people experiment with it. The other thing um, that a lot of you are probably going to shout out in the comments is that... Um, i already done a very similar video on the um, uh, Sonoff Mini R2. And yes, you were right. It's almost identical, the circuit. I just thought if it worked for the um, Sonoff R, uh, Mini R2, it might work for the Shelly 1. And it does. It works perfectly. So I thought I'd give it a go.
Now, if you're really interested to know how the circuit works, you should head over to my Sonoff video. Uh, in that video, I give an in-depth explanation on how uh, the virtual neutral is created and what the diodes do and the function of the capacitors. So um, it's definitely worthwhile seeing that video. So that's it for this video, guys. Please uh, like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.